All right, so in this video, we are going to go over downloading and installing Android Studio, downloading and installing the Java JDK, which you need to code in Android Studio because Android Studio uses the programming language Java. And we're also going to go over how to get started with the Android emulator so you can actually test your apps. So first of all, we will go to um, get Android Studio. So just open up a new, a new uh, browser window and just type maybe Android Studio download and we can go to the developer website and we can click on this link right here install Android Studio and I'm gonna be doing this on Windows obviously because that's my operating system and we can just click on this link up here for download Android Studio and click on this right here to download Android Studio and of course you will read all of this agreement just like I have and we'll click you agree and download Android Studio so obviously I already have it installed so I'm gonna cancel this download but once you actually have this downloaded, launch this, and it's pretty straightforward. Just follow the instructions and actually install Android Studio. Now, while Android Studio is installing, we'll go and grab the Java Development Kit, which we need to use Android Studio because it's going to be the programming language that you actually program in in Android Studio. Android Studio is just like an environment for Android specifically with a lot of tools that just make it easier to program to make Android apps. So let's open up a new tab and we'll type uh, Java JDK and it's an Oracle product so just type Oracle and you can go to the Java SE development kit 8 right here and then you can see all these different downloads for different environments. I'm using Windows and I have a 64-bit system so I'm going to download the Windows 64-bit version here but whatever system you have just choose the correct version. And before you download, you're going to have to accept their license agreement and then just choose whichever one you want. So I'm going to choose the Windows 64 and that will start downloading. Once it's done downloading, we can launch the JDK, JDK installer. Hit yes. I'm not sure if that will actually pop up on the video, but there was a little pop-up box there. And then just follow the wizard and install the JDK. So you can see down here the path that it's going to get installed to. Um, you might want to make note of that. We're going to need to reference that later. So make note of that and then just follow the downloader. I obviously already have it installed, so I'm not going to go through with that. And once that's done, it shouldn't take long to install the JDK. We need to add the a new path to your sister system environment variables so that, it, that your system knows where the Java JDK is. The reason we need to do that is because Java ex, we can execute Java commands on the command line. And unless you point it to where the JDK is located your system won't be able to use Java for example if you were to type Java version right now in your command line before the JDK was installed and before you added it to your environment variables nothing would come up you probably get some error I'm not sure exactly what would come up but definitely you wouldn't see what you see here but because I have it installed and I have it pointed to the location in memory where the JDK is my system recognizes it and says okay yeah we have Java we can we can use the coding language Java. So to add it to your environment variables path, uh, in Windows 7 anyway, you can just go environment variables and go edit system environment variables. Every uh, Windows version is going to be a little different, but I would just suggest Googling your Windows version. And so just go, you know, if you're Windows 10, say Windows 10 environment uh, variables and just look up how to get to your environment variables. So that's how I would suggest do that. But if you're on Windows 7 like me, you can just go edit the system environment variables. And this window will pop up. We can go to environment variables right here. And you can edit your environment variables for one user or for uh, system wide, so all users. So I'm going to edit it for all users. And for Windows 10, this is going to be a little different, but basically you want to look for path. You want to find the system variable named path right here. And then we want to edit those. And in Windows 7, it's kind of stupid. They all go into this little section here. I believe in Windows 10, it's actually uh, a list of items. So it's much easier just to add things to your environment variables path. But what we want to do is we want to take that path that I mentioned when we were installing Java and add it to the uh, variable value here. We want to append it to the variable value. So if we go here, this is where my Java JDK is located. It's in computer, my local drive C, programming files, and then in Java. You're, if you didn't change anything when you installed the JDK, that's exactly where yours is going to be. But if, you, if you're not sure, it's going to probably be in program files. So check in program files, 
go to, if you see Java, it's, it's gonna be inside Java, and look for the one that says JDK. So we can go into the JDK folder, go into the bin folder, and this is the path that we wanna copy. So I'm just gonna copy that whole path right here, and we wanna append it, so go to the very end of the system path, do a semicolon, and then paste in the JDK path. And then it's a good idea to end it with another semicolon in case in the future you want to append more things to your environment variables path. Now at this point you would click OK. I'm going to click cancel because I already have it added to my environment variables path. So I'm going to hit cancel but you hit OK. And then we hit OK and then we hit OK. Now what I want you to do is go to command, go to start, go to uh, open a command prompt or you can go to start and just type cmd, open a command prompt. And now we're going to test that the J, that your system knows where the JDK is. So just type Java space dash version. And if you get some a message that looks like this, that means you have successfully installed the JDK and your system knows where it is, which is good. If you get some kind of an error, uh, you, you've done something wrong along the lines here. And if it's a weird error message, I would suggest Googling it. Otherwise, just rewatch this video and try and figure out what you did wrong. So we'll close the command prompt and at this time your Android Studio will likely have finished installing. Like I said, it probably will take about five minutes. So if it doesn't start automatically, just click on Android Studio here and open up Android Studio. So originally your window will look something like this. You, you won't have all these apps in the side here because these are all apps that I've, these are some of the apps that I've built or uh, tutorials that I've made. So this, this list will be empty, but uh, it'll look very similar to what you're seeing here. So what we want to do is we're going to go start a new Android Studio project. And we're going to call it contacts list. And your uh, company name, you can change this to whatever you want. But this is just going to be uh, naming. There's nothing important with company domain. Like you can call this whatever you want. It doesn't matter. It's just a naming convention. But I'm going to call, I guess I could do... Uh, coding with Mitch actually would probably make more sense. And project location, this is just going to be where all your Android Studio projects are being stored. I, I store them here, you can store them wherever you like. There should be a default path, I would suggest keeping it in the default path. Then we can go to next, and this is going to be your minimum SDK version. I'm just going to use 18. Also, oh yes, you can click this little help me choose thing here and it will tell you how many people, how many Android users use what versions. So you can kind of optimize your apps for what versions people are mostly using. But I'm just going to use uh, API 18 for now. And we can go next. And these are some templates that they provide for people um, making apps. I don't really use many of them because uh, I get used to my own naming conventions and these kind of do things differently. So usually your best bet is just to start with an empty activity. It's going to be kind of basically nothing. It's going to be very very basic. So we're going to start with the empty activity and this is going to be your main activity name and your main activity layout. Those naming conventions are fine. And then we'll hit finish and Android Studio will start building your project. This might take a minute or two. Alright so once it's done starting your project, building your project, it's probably going to look something like this. You're going to have a bunch of files over here, you're going to have main activity open and the layout for main activity open here. But I want to just get started with the emulator first to make sure that that's running and then in the next video we'll start actually writing code. So this play button up here is how you actually will test apps. You press the play button and it will uh, bring up this little window and once it's done initializing uh, it will give you a list of available virtual devices that you can test your app on. If you click the play button right now this is going to be empty so there's going to be no devices in here because we haven't built a virtual device. So let's go down here and cr click on uh, create a new virtual device. And we're going to create a phone. I'm going to use, uh, which one? Uh, ne Nexus 5 is fine. So just make sure over here we have phone selected. We click on Nexus 5 and we can go to next. And here we want to select the version. If you are just installing Android Studio, it should have come with the newest version. But uh, maybe actually before we install the emulator, let's check the version. So we'll close that and close that and we'll go up to tools, go to Android and SDK manager. And inside SDK manager it 
you select the uh, Android SDK on the left here and this is going to tell you which version you have installed. So to follow this course, it's very important that you have the same version that I have. There are some subtle differences between versions. There's not many, but there, there are some. So I would definitely suggest using the same version as I am, which is the Android, I don't even, I don't know how to say this. I think it's pronounced nu Nougat or something. I don't know. I just say Android 7.1 <laughs> and uh, get, get that same version installed. If one of these other ones are checked, just check Android uh, 7.1 here, click apply and Android Studio will install that newest version for you. Obviously I have it installed, so I'm not going to do that. And then just click OK. Once that's done, we're going to go back and actually create that virtual device. So press the play button, go to create new virtual device, select a Nexus 5, sure, go to next, select the version. So here we have that uh, Android version 7.1 right here selected, go to next. And just do a quick check right here, you can see that the Nexus 5 is the phone, the version is 7.1. Um, that's just a default orientation for when you run the app. I would definitely suggest using portrait and now we're going to go down to show advanced settings. There's only two things that are really important in this section here. Uh, if you scroll down and this is the amount of RAM that your virtual device is going to use. I don't have a ton of RAM in my system. I think I only have actually eight gigs of RAM. So usually I'll give it, uh, whoops. I'll give it two gigs of RAM, which isn't very much. If you can afford to give it more, like if you have 16 gigs or 24 gigs or more, I would I would definitely give the emulator more RAM because it's quite slow running with two gigs of RAM. If I could, I would give it eight gigs, and then it would be nice and fast. And this this is fine. This is just the internal storage. You don't need much memory because um, you can always just clear the memory or delete the virtual device and then make a new one. So memory isn't really important. And this down here makes you have this tick because if you don't have this tick, you won't be able to actually use the keyboard to test your app. You have to actually punch the keys, which can be pretty annoying. So then, and that's it. And then we just hit finish and uh, create the virtual device. I'm actually going to hit finish because sometimes there's glitches. And if I run into a glitch, I want to make sure I show you how to solve it. But it looks like everything's good. So you can see our Nexus 5X right here is good. There was a glitch. Um, I remember a while ago here let me just go over it just in case you do run into it so we'll go to the AVD manager where the virtual devices weren't uh, building correctly so if if for some reason your virtual device isn't building correctly um, these these might be blank like if you are creating the virtual device and it's not showing the phone or it's not showing the version there's just a glitch you can just click on change and probably click OK if that doesn't do it keep doing it and same with the phone or click clone device go cancel OK and you just want to make sure that the phone is showing up here and the version is showing up here there was just a glitch I remember maybe six months ago it was doing that when I was creating virtual devices so just uh, if you're having problems and you see that those things aren't there just click around and see if you can get them to pop up alright so that should be good now we have our new virtual device right here. This is the virtual device manager. I can close that and let's actually run our app on that new device. So press play and now you should have this Nexus 5 coming up in your available virtual devices. And we can click OK and Android Studio will launch the emulator and run the app that you have on the emulator. So right now we have nothing special on our, on our app. We just have like a basic layout. It should just print out hello world as you can see from the layout. There's no code in main activity. All it's doing is actually loading that layout right here, you can see. So we expect this to just show a layout file in the middle of the screen and say, hello world. All right, so there's our app. And we can see it prints out hello world just as we expected. So I'm gonna stop this video here. In the next one, before we actually get started coding, I'm gonna show you how to run apps that you create on your actual device.